Today we're going to be showing how to put together and use a WattsU power monitor using a solar panel that's charging two 6 volt batteries. The items you will need are a solar panel, the WattsU power monitor, two 6 volt batteries, two terminal blocks, four clamps, ten small screws, a diode, some assorted wires, a serial to USB cable, and a wooden board. The tools you will need are a regular Phillips head screwdriver, a small flathead screwdriver, wire strippers, and wire crimpers. The first thing to do is to take the two 6 volt batteries, set them on the board, and clamp them down so they don't move around. After you've secured the batteries, you're going to secure the WattsU power monitor and the two terminal blocks to the wooden board as well. Now we're going to show how to strip and crimp a wire. First, take the wire and if it has a pre-existing terminal, cut the terminal off. Next, take the wire stripper and strip off approximately 3 eighths of an inch of the wire. Twist the tips of the wire so that it goes into the new terminal smoothly. Take the crimper and make sure that the half moon is on the top part of the wire. Slide it in and squeeze as hard as you can to make sure that it has a tight crimp. To double check, give it a tug to make sure it doesn't come off. Next, label the terminal blocks TB1 and TB2. The next thing is to take the power cable from the solar panel and hook it up to TB1. Put the red positive cable on one side and the black negative cable on the other side. Just to make sure it's working, take a voltmeter and measure it to make sure it's receiving power. Do this between every step. Next, the diode. Connect it from the positive side of TB1 to one side of TB2. The diode ensures that power won't drain from the batteries when they aren't being charged. Make sure that the silver bar on the diode is on the side closer to TB2. After you've secured the diode, Take a wire and run it through the amps meter on the Watsy power monitor and connect it to the diode side of TB2. Then connect the other end to the positive side of the first battery. Next thing is to take a wire and connect the negative side of the first battery to the positive side of the second battery. After you've connected the two batteries, take another wire and connect the negative side of battery 2 to the negative side of TB1. This grounds it. The next thing to do is to connect the voltmeter to TB1. The voltmeter is marked with a plus and minus sign to let you know which wire goes where. When you connect the wire to TB1, make sure that the positive and negative wires go into the proper terminals. After you've connected the voltmeter, you're going to connect the power cable for the Watsy power monitor to TB1 as well. Again, 
Make sure that the cables go into their correct terminals. Before you can hook it up to the computer, you must first download the HL340 driver for the serial to USB cable. To do this, go to www.watsu.com and scroll down to the HL340 download button. Save the file to your computer, open it, and download it. After you've downloaded the driver software, take the serial to USB cable and plug the serial end into the Watsu power monitor and the USB end into your computer. To download the Watsu Power Monitor software, go to www.watsu.com and then click on the Test Drive Free Software page. Scroll down and follow the download instructions. To open the program, pull up your start menu and find the Watsu Serial 3.0 folder and open the program. To open the live data stream, select the appropriate port in the menu. If it doesn't show up the first time, hit the Scan Again button and it will find it. For more accurate readings, you can loop the wire through the amps meter multiple times. If you do this, go to the Setup tab and change the number in the current sensor loop box. To view the current data stream, open the Charts tab. You can view the individual readings or you can view multiple at the same time. To record the data stream, select the Save Data button and input the name you want for the log. The blinking Logging Data button shows it is actively recording. To view previously saved logs, go to the Log Viewer tab and select the log you want to view. This log was recorded over a 15 minute period. At the beginning, the solar panel was left in a light shadow, then covered a part of the way. Finally, it was covered for a minute before uncovering it completely and putting it in the sun. To change how often the log records data, go to the Setup tab to the Data Logging box. Change the time to the desired intervals. Default is every 5 seconds.